My name is Matt, I'm an author. One final question, after hearing all the positive things, why do you think from your experience so many people in the West are intimidated by Islam? What, what, what do you think? Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahilladzi arsala rasulahu bilhuda wa dinil haqba liuzhirahu ala dini kulihi wa kafa billahi syahida. Asyadu ala ilahi lallahu wahdahu la syarikalah wa asyadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu la nabiya ba'dah. Berjumpa lagi dengan channel saya Mars Tehno. Saya doakan semoga semua sahabat dalam keadaan sehat selalu. Pada video kali ini kami akan menampilkan sebuah sesi tanya jawab yang sangat seru. Seorang penulis bernama Matt mengajukan pertanyaan kepada Dr. Zakir Naik. Jika Islam begitu indah seperti yang Anda jelaskan tadi, mengapa Barat merasa terintimidasi oleh Islam? Nah sahabat, mari kita saksikan saja video selengkapnya dan saya akan sedikit mereaksinya. Ya, yeah, Thank you for fitting me in. Um, it's been an amazing talk. Uh, you are very inspiring. Um, my name is Matt. I'm an author. One final question. After hearing all the positive things, why do you think from your experience so many people in the West are intimidated by Islam? What, what, what do you think? Very good question. The brother asked the most important question of the session. That if I talk so good things, why is the West so intimidated? It is because of the media. Today, there is virulent propaganda regarding Islam on the international media, whether it be international channels, international radio stations, the newspapers, the magazines. According to Time magazine, in a span of 150 years, from, 1900, uh, from 1800 to 1950, there were 60,000 books written against Islam and the Prophet. 60,000. Now it's increased. So depending upon how the media portrays Islam, and you might have heard, I said, the solution for terrorism is there in Quran. I, I, I said that. You heard the answer of mine. But the West is blaming Muslims to be terrorists. Right or wrong? Yeah, right. My government is saying that I'm a terrorist. Do I look like a terrorist? No. Yes, <laughs> but the government is saying that. What do we have to do? That's what the people are saying that my last and final messenger prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a terrorist. I don't agree with it. So what we have to do, we have to practically demonstrate. So the reason whether the West is intimidated because the West is afraid of Islam. Why it's afraid? If Islam is successful, then people won't be able to flirt around with their girlfriends, they won't be able to do fornication, they won't be able to do adultery, they won't, uh, they, they will not be able to have alcohol, they'll not be able to gamble. This is all, I would say, a fictitious happiness. There's something like true happiness and fictitious happiness. I'm being a doctor, when you have alcohol, you feel high. It is a temporary fictitious happiness. Islam talks about permanent factual happiness. And the permanent factual happiness can only happen if you accept Islam. See, I've been taken away from my country. You know, I did hijrah. You may not be knowing my background because I speak like that. And the non-Muslims in India love me. So when the non-Muslims love me, the government is afraid. <laughs> so when the non-Muslims of India start loving me and start praising me, the government tells I'm a terrorist and I'm out now. But they took away all my wealth. For me, I'm very happy. Because happiness is the state of mind. So what I, so my job as a Dai brother is to remove the misconceptions of Islam. So I've given the talk on, is terrorism Muslim monopoly? I've given statistics that the first hijack was done by non-Muslim. The first assassination, non-Muslim. You see, in the, except for the last 20, 30 years, you see the history there are hardly any Muslims involved in terrorist activity. Hardly. And now, there are some Muslims who have been brainwashed by the Westerners. You know, the ISIS, I believe it's the handiwork of the enemies of Islam. It is anti-ISIS, I say. There's no ISIS, Islamic State of Iraq. 
It is not. It is a handiwork of the enemies of Islam, promoting them to spoil the picture of Islam. Where, how can Islam doesn't believe in killing innocent human beings? The person says, I'm a Muslim. La ilaha illallah, Allah Akbar, and kills the non-Muslim. It is non-Muslims programming them, paying them. You understand? It's all programmed. So, it is the West which is afraid because if Islam spread, peace will spread. If peace spreads, you know, I said in my talk yesterday that today the whole economy of the world is revolving around riba, interest based. And you know that the, that the banks are ruled only by a handful of families. You may be aware of that. You know, a handful of the families. They are controlling the economy of the world. And we think Fort Knox, you know, it is owned by the American government. No, it is owned by a few Jew, come, Jew families. You know that. So they're controlling the world. If Islam spread, the control will go away. For well, Islam believes in equality. Islam believes that all human beings are equal just because the rich are not superior. So because of that, you find that there are a lot of movies made against Islam. There's a lot of media. That is the reason we started our own satellite channel by the name of Peace TV. In English, Urdu, Bangla, Chinese. Four languages. It's on 15 satellites. And we try and remove the misconceptions about Islam. The moment it became popular, I was not allowed to enter UK because when I gave talks, there were 25,000 people. Oh, 25,000 people, problem. In New York, we were going to give a talk in the Madison Square Garden. Now I don't have visa. I went to USA many times. But when there were 2,000, 5,000, they had no problem. When it became 25,000, 30,000, they have problem. The largest audience, they are afraid that people will come to the truth. So what we are doing, we are going by satellite. So Allah has his ways. So the West mainly is afraid of Islam spreading because if Islam spreads, then all human beings will be equal. There will not be some few who will be superior. In Islam, human beings are equal just because the rich are not superior. We can love each other. We can embrace the other person. So Islam, you get the true happiness. So this talk was based on that, that the Islamic value of true happiness is a person doesn't have to be rich to be happy. And actually, if you analyze, brother, the rich people are unhappy. The rich people require tablets to sleep. The person who is poor is happy. So the true happiness is you understand the life, understand the human values, so that we follow the commandments of a creator. Hope that answers the question, brother. Thank you very much. Thank you. Masya Allah, sebuah pertanyaan yang sangat bagus dari seorang penulis barat yang bernama Matt. Walaupun dijelaskan Islam sangat indah dan sempurna, mengapa dunia barat merasa terintimidasi oleh kehadiran Islam? Apa pendapat Anda Dr. Zakir Naik? Mendapat pertanyaan begini tentunya tidaklah sulit bagi seorang Dr. Zakir Naik. Menurut beliau penyebabnya adalah karena ulah dari media. Saat ini ada propaganda jahat tentang Islam di media internasional. Baik saluran internasional, stasiun TV, stasiun radio internasional, surat kabar ataupun majalah. Menurut majalah Times dalam rentang waktu 150 tahun, dari 1800 sampai tahun 1050 ada 60 ribuan buku yang ditulis untuk melawan Islam. Anda dapat bayangkan 60 ribu buku dan sekarang lebih meningkat. Jadi tergantung bagaimana media menggambarkan Islam. Menurut Dr. Zakir Naid beliau pun dikatakan sebagai seorang teroris oleh pemerintah India. Lihatlah saya, apakah Dr. Zakir Naik ini seperti teroris? Tapi kenyataannya, 
pemerintah India tetap mengatakan seperti itu bahwa Dr. Zakir Naik adalah teroris. Jadi alasan apakah mengapa Barat merasa terintimidasi oleh Islam? Karena Barat takut akan Islam. Mengapa takut Islam? Karena jika Islam berhasil berkuasa, maka orang-orang tidak bisa bermain-main lagi dengan pacarnya. Mereka tidak bisa melakukan pencabulan, mereka tidak bisa melakukan perzinahan. Ya, mereka tidak bisa minum alkohol, mereka tidak bisa bermain judi. Sesungguhnya kesenangan yang mereka lakukan itu adalah fiktif semata. Saya ini seorang dokter, jika seorang minum alkohol dia akan merasa tinggi. Tetapi dalam Islam memberikan kebahagiaan yang hakiki dan permanen. Nah sahabat mungkin itu saja sedikit reaksi video dari saya. Mudah-mudahan bermanfaat. Wabilaihi taufiq wal hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.